So I've been growing mushrooms ever since I was like 14, more as a hobby. I'd grow wherever I could, whether it be under my bed, in my closet. But then eventually I went home and visited family in Germany, you know, like 27 years old. I noticed there's just a ton of mushrooms, you know, even in the markets and wildly growing. And it sparked my interest even more on culinary aspects of it and cultivation aspects. So the first step of mushroom culture is transferred on to a petri dish, and it's their mycelium that grows on there, which is basically their root system. And you transfer those dishes onto high protein grain, like these millet, wheat berries, barley, and you sterilize those grains, and you add that petri dish into those grains. Those are your grain spawn bags, which is basically like the mushroom seed. And you transfer those onto what we use as a substrate, which is hardwoods, so like oak, and then we use a variety of different supplementation, spent brewer's grains or mash from distilleries or tofu byproducts, trash to other people, which is gold for us. It's like making a cake, you want to incorporate everything evenly so that it's has even growth throughout. So if you don't, you can have pockets of different stuff. Some stuff the mushrooms don't like, they can kill them. And pasteurize it so all the bad stuff's dead. It has to be like really clean, the green bread mold, that's like an enemy of the mushroom. And then those seeds grow into the wood. Mushrooms are ready to fruit, which they go into that environment that they like with the high humidity and cooler temperatures. And they basically just start growing out of there. Creating the climate that they love and enjoy was difficult, especially in a city like San Diego where it's dry and hot, not humid and cool like mushrooms like. The fastest ones are about four and a half weeks and the longer ones take up to like 16 weeks. Some even take up to eight months. But then the goal is to just start those and keep producing them every week. And then eventually once you start getting fruits, you have new bags going in so that you have a perpetual harvest. So right now we grow blue oysters. They are a very aggressive, fruiting, dense, big, like beefy clusters. Lion's mane, which are these big, white, fluffy, hairy mushrooms. They have a crab-like taste and texture. It's very popular also in the medicinal world. It helps with brain function, heart, gut. And we also have chestnut mushrooms, which are a long, stemmy, brown mushroom. A nice crunchy texture and a real earthy nutty taste. We've grown probably 30 different types of mushrooms and tested them at the farmers markets. I work markets in Hillcrest, Little Italy, Lucadia. So you don't really hang out and talk to 300 people in a day from those certain cities. You also have to like educate on what these things taste like. They're not those weird slimy ones that you get at the grocery store. They all have different textures, flavors, consistencies. People are becoming more conscious on what they're eating and you can't just constantly be eating red meat. And the mushroom is kind of like a great replacement for meat because of its meatiness and its ability to take on whatever flavor you really want. And you can do it in vertical growing, which is nice because a two by four by 10 rack is like having a huge plot. A lot of people don't really know how to use mushrooms. In Europe and in Asia, they've been eating mushrooms forever and ever. And here it's kind of still a new thing. You, know, you go on a menu, which always irritates me, at a restaurant and it just says mushrooms. And you're like, well, what kind of mushroom? I just love watching them grow. They're beautiful. They look like almost underwater sea creatures. We are more closely related to the fungus family than we are to the animal kingdom. They are one of the only things you can eat that actually give you vitamin D. They absorb vitamin D from the sun. So let's say you had some shiitakes and you dried them outside. They would almost triple their vitamin D intake still kind of scraping the surface on research and what they can do for even depression, for cancer, for tumors, for blood pressure. The medical side of it is pretty amazing. And I think we should be looking more into what the earth is giving us versus what we can mix up in a lab. People shouldn't be scared of a mushroom, unless you find it in your backyard or something and avoid that. <laughs>